Shalom. And uh, I'm Samaria Shavua. Um, let us welcome the Lord of the Shabbat, uh, Yeshua, and the Lord of the Avinam Shabbat Shamayim. Barakata, Yehovah Eloheinu Melech HaAla, Sheke Yanu, Veheye Manu, Veheye Yanu, Lasman Asel. Father in heaven, blessed our God, Yehovah our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and preserved us and has enabled us to reach this time, this time of the Shavuot. Uh, today is uh, 4 June 2022, 5 Sivan, 5782. Well, last Tuesday was Rosh Kodesh Sivan. Sivan means season or time. Let's say the blessing. May it be your will, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, that you renew for us a good month in our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. Sivan is the third month of the biblical calendar. In Shemot, Exodus 19.1, God's word says, In the third month, after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day, they came now into the wilderness of Sinai. And Moshe went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the sons of Israel. Once again, um, the insight we get here is that the house of Jacob are the tribes, the native-born Israelites. And the sons of Israel includes the alien, the mixed multitude, those who joining with them, uh, also delivered by yod Bave out of Egypt, uh, following one Torah. You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession, my own treasured possession among all the peoples. Remember, there were 70 people groups in Bereshit then. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of Kohanim, of priests, and a holy nation. And all the people answered together and said, All the Lord has spoken, we will do. The Ten Commandments, the Torah. So it came about on the third day, Moshe brought the people out of the camp to meet Yehovah God. Also today, 5 Sivan is 49 Omer, but in a few hours, it will be uh, 50 Omer. Because in the Hebrew uh, Jewish perspective, the start of the day is on sundown. This is significant. Abba Father, blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your mitzvah, with your commandments, and commanded us to count the Omer. And... Uh, in Vayikra, Leviticus 23, 15, uh, God's word says, and let me do the reading, but before that, let's say the blessing, before the reading of the Torah portion. Barukatah Yehovah Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitz Shanu Bemitzvotah, Vetsiveinu Laasok, Bidevrei Torah. Blessed art thou, Yehovah God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with thy commandments and sub and commanded us to engross ourselves in the study of the Torah. So talagang seryosohan pag-aaral na ito at um, i-apply sa buhay natin. So Vayikra or Leviticus 23 beginning with verse 15. From the day after the day of rest, that is from the day you bring the sheaf for waving, you are to count seven full weeks until the day after the seventh week you are to count 50 days. So that is the Torah, that's the instruction, that's the command. And then you are to present a new grain offering to Adonai. You must bring bread from your homes for weaving, two loaves made with one gallon of fine flour, baked with leaven as first fruits for Adonai. Along with the bread, present seven lambs without defect, one year old, 
one young bull and two rams. This will be a burnt offering for Yehovah with their grain and drink offerings and offering made by fire as a fragrant aroma for Yodei Babi. I offer one male goat as a sin offering and two male lambs one year old as a sacrifice of peace offerings. The Kohen will wave them with the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering before Adonai with the two lambs. This will be holy for Adonai, for the Kohen. On the same day, you are to call a holy convocation. Do not do any work, any kind of ordinary work. This is a permanent regulation through all your generations, no matter where you live. When you harvest the right crops producing your land, don't harvest all the way to the corners of your field, and don't gather the ears of grain left by the harvesters. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. I am Adonai, Lord your God. Our Father, who art in heaven, blessed art thou, Jehovah our God, King of the universe, who gave to us the Torah of truth and planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, Jehovah, giver of the Torah. So the, we have a double portion uh, for this day. Parasha reading is for the Moedim uh, Shavuot. Uh, based on Exodus, Shemot 19, 1 to 2023. Moshe uh, on Mount Sinai and Yehovah's visitation. And the very 15, 19 to 16, the Feast of Weeks, as the Torah, uh, one of the regalim. The Haftarah is from Ezekiel 1, 1 to 28 speaks about the radiance of the glory of the Lord, as in God's visitation in Mount Sinai. The Brit Adasha portion is Yukanan 1, 32-34. Yukanan testifies Yeshua on whom the Ruach HaKodesh as a dove descended and remained, that this is the Son of God. And the other uh, blessing is Parasha reading number 34, Bamidbar, uh, which we commonly know as numbers, but Bamidbar means in the wilderness. That's how uh, they give the title uh, to the portions. The Torah portions are Bamidbar 1, the census of Israel's warriors, the Levites exempted, the arrangement of the camps, chapter, um, that's up to chapter 2. The next portion is chapter 3, the Levites of Aaron's lineage are to be priests, Kohanim, the duties of the Levites, and the firstborn redeemed. And Bamidbar chapter 4 speaks of the duties of the Kohatites, those uh, who were concerned with the holy things, like the ark, the sacred furnishings, the table of the bread of God's presence, the menorah, the lampstand the golden altar of incense. The Jershonites concerning the, the concern was concerning the curtains and the screen supports and the Merarites concerning uh, the boards, the bars, the pillars. The after our reading is from Hosea 2, 1 to 23. Israel's unfaithfulness condemned, however, Restoration of Israel with her uh, Yeshua, with her master, uh, is uh, sin. The Brit Hadasha is found in Romans 9, 22 to 23. The solicitude or the care, the concern for Israel. The 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, 12 to 31, the body of Messiah is one, yet has many members. And book study, Luke 1 to 3. It's all about Yeshua's uh, birth being foretold. Miriam visits Elisheva, the Magnificat, 
Your Canaan is born, Zacharias prophesies, Yeshua's birth in Bethlehem, Yeshua presented in the temple, and Yeshua's return to Nazareth in his visit to Jerusalem. So Yeshua, uh, genealogy as well is mentioned after he was immersed. So the observation we make is following the inductive Bible study method, which begins with the Word of God, consisting of no observation, discovering for ourselves what the author, well, ultimately God himself, um, as all scripture are not inspired by God, as God breath is saying, play text, the five W's and an H, who, what, where, when, why, how. Uh, second is the interpretation, I finding out what the author means, or again, ultimately, what God means in his word, and A, application, applying or putting into practice the truth uh, that we learn through our lives. From the passages we read, Exodus 19.3, Moshe went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the sons of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples. This is the point here. Yeshua, or God himself, uh, was making a proposal that he desired that the Israelites, together with a mixed multitude, would be his treasured procession among all the peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, of Kohanim, and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. In Devarim 29.2, that's a cross-reference, Moshe summoned all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and all his servants and all his land. The great trials which your eyes have seen, those great signs and wonders, remember the ten plagues, Nile river turning to blood, frogs all over the land, mites, gnats, swarms of insects, pestilence on the Egyptian cattle, but of the livestock of Israel, not, not even one dead. Boils, hail, but only in the land of Goshen, where the sons of Israel were, there was no hail. Um, locusts and uh, total or thick darkness over the land of Egypt for three days. But in Shemot 10.23, we read, all the sons of Israel had light in their dwellings. And the last plague, the death of all the firstborn in Egypt. However, a day shall not, a dog shall not even bark, that you may understand how the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. And by the blood of the Lamb, the firstborn, among the Israelites were spared. Here we can see how the Israelites, including the mixed multitude who sojourned with them in the wilderness, were favored by God. How I bore you on eagle's wings, they were in 29.5, and I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes had not worn out on you, and your sandal has not worn out as on your foot. It was as if their feet were not touching the ground to wear out the sandals. Thirdly, you have not eaten bread, nor have you drunk wine, a strong drink, in order that you might know that I am the Lord your God. Next, now that if you will indeed obey my voice, Deverim 28.1, now it shall be if you will diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments which I command you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you if you will obey the Lord your God. 
Yeshua in Ukainan 10 1 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. And a stranger, they simply will not follow, but will flee from him, because they do not know the voice of the strangers. My sheep hear my voice, Yeshua speaking, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give eternal life to them, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. In a Jewish wedding uh, tradition or customs, the Shidukim refers to the first step in the marriage process, which is the arraignment preliminary to the legal, betrothal, or formal engagement. It was acceptable for the father, as in the case of Abraham, designating uh, Ilyasar, uh, delegating this responsibility to a shukan, a marriage broker or a matchmaker. And it was common in ancient Israel that the father of the groom is the one who would select a bride for uh, his son. So we see a picture here of the father who has given the disciples or has given the believers to Yeshua. So it is he who has chosen us. If you will indeed keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession, a special treasured possession, doing um, among all the peoples. The twenty nineteen. You stand today, all of you, before the Lord, your God, your chiefs, your tribes, your elders, and your officers, even all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and the alien who is with you within your camps, from the one who chose, who, who chops your wood to the one who draws water, that you may enter into the covenant with the Lord your God and into the oath, into his oath, which the Lord your God is making with you today, in order that he may establish you today. Again, this is my point as his people and that he may be your God just as he spoke to you and as we saw to your fathers to Abraham to Yitzhak and to Jacob now not with you alone am I making this covenant this agreement this ketubah and this oath but both with those who stand here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God and with those who are not with us here today. Question, could this mean us as well? Could this covenant apply with us? What was this covenant? What was this ketubah? Exactly, Shemot 19.1 set the wind, the time, in the third month after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt. The third month is the month of Sivan, which is now uh, in this uh, uh, biblical calendar, this Jewish calendar. And uh, the month of Sivan. And my take on this is Yodei Vave was in a Jewish wedding custom proposing to the sons of Israel, to the people of Israel, to be his treasured possession, Niligawan, his bride. And all the people answered together and said, all the Lord has spoken, we will do. The answer is yes or oh. And the terms and conditions of this betrothal, of this proposed marriage, are found in the same episode in, the, okay, in Shemot 19, chapter 19 and 20. In the handing down of the written um, 
stone tablets by the very finger of God. Mm -hmm. The Ten Commandments, the Aseret Hatiberot. Ketubah means written. Mm -hmm. So the Ketubah was, and it still is today, the prenuptial agreement or marriage contract. So let's uh, uh, recite the Ten Commandments. Consider this as our covenant, the terms and conditions of God's betrothal upon us. Wala pa yung marriage. Uh, and the celebration of Shavuot, there would be a kupa, diba? just like in a typical uh, Jewish wedding. Mm -hmm. So the commandments um, list the terms and conditions. Aleph, I am Yehovah the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt where you live as slaves. Beth, you are to have no other gods before me. You are not to make for yourselves a carved image or any kind of representation of anything in heaven above, on the earth beneath, or in the water below the shoreline. You are not to bow down to them or serve them, for I, Yehovah the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents, also the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but displaying grace to the thousandth generation of those who love me and obey my mitzvah. Gimel, you shall not misuse the name of Yehovah, the Lord your God, because Yehovah will not leave unpunished someone who misuses his name. Dalet, observe the day of Shabbat. To set it apart as holy as Yehovah, the Lord your God, ordered you to do, you have six days to labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Shabbat for yod heh -Bab -Heh, the Lord your God. On it you are not to do any kind of work, not you, your son, or your daughter, not your male or female slave, not your ox, your donkey, or any of your livestock, and not the foreigners staying with you inside the gates to your property, so that your male and female slaves can rest just as you do. You are to remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and Yehovah, the Lord your God, brought you out of there by a strong hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yehovah, the Lord your God, has ordered you to keep the day of Shabbat. Hey, honor your father and your mother as Yehovah, the Lord your God, ordered you to do, so that you will live long and have things go well with you in the land Yehovah, the Lord your God, is giving you. Vav, do not murder. Zayin, do not commit adultery. Hate, do not steal. Death, do not possess your neighbor's house. His steal is male or female slave. His ox is donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Devarim, Deuteronomy 5, 6 to 20. This we proclaim, affirming our covenant this day, Shabbat with Jehovah, the Lord our God, making us part of the Israel of God, having been grafted in the good olive tree as his plan and purpose was, to be a kingdom of Kohanim, of priests, a holy nation, for by grace we have been saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, the former Nibi, the Goyim, Gentiles in the flesh, but now in Christ Yeshua, have been brought near by his blood. For he himself is our Shalom, who made both groups, Messianic Jew, and born from above, Goyim, into one new man in Yeshua HaMashiach. Well, Shavuot is referred to as the Feast of Weeks because it was celebrated seven complete weeks plus one day, or 50 days after Pesach. Secondly, for the Feast of the Harvest of the latter, the later grains, because it concluded the harvest of the later grains. Or thirdly, the Feast or Day of the First Fruits, because the first loaves uh, made from the new grain were then offered on the altar aside from the first fruits of the crops. Remember the seven species of fruits of the promised land, the wheat, the barley, the grapes, the figs, pomegranates, olives, and dates. Immediately, 
the third day after Pesach, as soon as an Israelite farmer sees the first sign of ripening fruit in his field or orchard, he would tie a string or ribbon around it and designate it as Bikurim. Later, he would pick this fruit, put it in a woven basket, and set off for the Mishkan or Tabernacle on the 50th day of Omer, Shavuot, as it was one of the three Shavuot regalim, a pilgrimage where three times in a year all males should appear before the Lord our God in the place where he chooses at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Agmatsa, and at the Feast of Week Shavuot and the Feast of Booth, Sokot, and they shall appear not before the Lord empty-handed. Deborah 16, 16 to 17. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord, your God, which he has given you. Aside from covenant, oath was also mentioned in Vayikra, Leviticus 23, 15, seven Shabbats. From the strong Hebrew Chalky Dictionary, the reference number 7650, Shabbat means to be complete to seven oneself. That is to swear as if by repeating a declaration seven times. Okay, uh, yung Jesus reigns seven times nila. You know, proclaim To adjure, to charge by an oath, uh, to take an oath to swear, then you shall be my treasured possession among all the peoples. And they answered, all the Lord has spoken, we will do. So the Torah instructs three times a year, you shall celebrate a feast to me. This is a command. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, at Matzah, Shavuot, and for seven days, you are to eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you at the appointed time in the month of Abib, Nisan, for in it you came out of Egypt. And none shall appear before me empty-handed. Also, you shall observe the feast of harvest, of the first fruits of your labors from what you sow in the field. Shavuot, also the feast of the ingathering at the end of the year, when you gather in the first fruits of your labors from the field. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord. You shall count seven weeks for yourself. You shall begin to count seven weeks for the times you begin to put the sickle to the standing ring. Deborah 16, 9 to 12. Then you shall celebrate the Feast of Weeks to the Lord your God with a tribute of a free will offering of your hand. Uh, which you shall give, just as the Lord your God blesses you, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your son and your daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levite who is in your town, and the strangers, and the orphan, and the widow who are in your midst, in the place where the Lord your God chooses to establish his, his name in our hearts, because the temple is no longer standing, in Jerusalem, but our body is now the temple of the Ruachapote, the Holy Spirit. Since Shavuot was a pilgrimage festival, a large procession of other Jews would be carrying their baskets on the road, singing songs of joyful praise for the good harvest. They would place their baskets uh, filled with first fruits on oxen adorned with garlands of flowers in a grand parade to Jerusalem. The ox would later be sacrificed as a peace offering. As the pilgrims pass through the different towns, many more would join along the way and accompany them all the way to Jerusalem. Deborah 26 1. It was a Torah of rejoicing. Rabbi Tim Heck writes when Shavuot finally arrives, its primary focus is celebrating the giving of the Torah. God's gift to the Israelites, the Jewish people, and a guide for all peoples. Giving to mankind a true representation of God's love and holy character. It also celebrates the harvest and is marked by giving thanks to God 
for sustaining our lives through the bounty of food, especially now during these times of pandemic, times of luck, the earth brings forth. Thus, it marks the point at which the first fruits of the harvest were to be presented to the priests during the period of the temples. People would bring first fruits beginning at Shavuot and throughout the harvest period until Sukkot. To mark these particular aspects of Shavuot, the following practices are often observed. The synagogue is decorated with green plants, branches, and even trees reflecting the greenery around Mount Sinai as well as symbolizing the food which God provides and gives to us at the time of harvest. Secondly, dairy products uh, dominate the meals on Shavuot because the biblical text indicate the flocks and the cattle of the Israelites were there at the foot of the mountain. Uh, roses are a favorite flower for Shavuot on the basis of a play of words from Esther 8.14 and the decree that was proclaimed in Shushan, in which that is the Torah, and was given with a rose, Shoshan. And fourthly, it is traditional to stay up the entire night at the beginning of Shavuot and study Torah. This is explained as necessary to prepare ourselves for the revelation of God. And lastly, the Book of Ruth is read in the synagogue which reflects the agricultural aspects of the festival as well as the idea of ingathering. For Ruth was a Gentile, a Moabitess, who was brought into the people of Israel. As a convert to the God of Israel, Ruth said to Naomi, Do not urge me to leave you and turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Ruth stands symbolically for all of us who accept the Torah willingly. That brings us to the marriage of Ruth to Boaz, Naomi's kinsman. He was the kinsman redeemer, the Boel. And Ruth chapter 2 we see Ruth the Moabites saying to you, Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after what in above sight I might find favor. And she said to her, go my daughter. Then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? She is the young Moabite woman who returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves, Ruth said. Then Boaz said to Ruth, listen carefully, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field. Furthermore, do not go on from this one, but stay here with my maids. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground. Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me, since I am a Goyim, a foreigner? And Boaz answered, All that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me, and how you left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and came to a people you did not previously know. May the Lord reward you. Your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. Listen carefully, as if it was Yeshua speaking to us, because Yeshua is our Lord, He is our Redeemer. Then Ruth said, I have found favor in your sight, my Lord. For you have comforted me and indeed have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. So she stayed down with the maids of Boa in order to glean until the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. And she lived with her mother in law Naomi. The barley harvest is the time of Shavuot. Now in chapter 4, Boa went up to the gate 
and stopped there saying to the closest relative, Naomi, who has come back from the land of Moab, has to sell the price, the piece of land which belonged to our brother Elimelech. So I thought to inform you, buy it before the elders. If you will redeem it, redeem it. Boaz said, on the day you buy the field for the, from the hand of Naomi, you must also acquire Ruth, the Moabites, the widow of the deceased, in order to raise up the name of the deceased on his inheritance. And the closest relative said, I cannot redeem it for myself lest I jeopardize my own inheritance. Redeem it yourself. You may have my right of redemption, for I can't redeem it. So the closest relative said to Boaz, buy it for yourself. And he reasoned, and he removed his sandal, as was the custom in former times in Israel, as a manner of attestation concerning the redemption and the exchange of land. Then Boaz said to the elders, Today I have bought from the hand of Naomi, and moreover I acquired Ruth the Moabites, the widow of Malon, to be my wife. How beautiful it is to hear as if Yeshua is saying that about us. Because formerly our father was the father of lies, and he had the first right of uh, redemption, but he has refused as a time, and Yeshua has redeemed us. So praise the Lord. Remember, you Canaan, the mercer saying, after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Because surely the next day, as you Canaan saw Yeshua, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, after me comes a man who has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. And, and I did not recognize him, but in order that he might be manifested in his breath, I came baptizing in water. He upon whom you see the Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptizes, who immerses in the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and born and have borne witness that this is the Son of God, Yeshua. Hallelujah. From the Messianic perspective, it is significant that the Ruach HaKodesh was poured out upon the early believers in Yeshua on Shavuot Pentecost. What happened in Mount Sinai was a spectacle. But in the same manner, in the book of Acts, we also see Yeshua, who was crucified on Pesach, appeared after his resurrection forever. 40 days, Acts 1 3. And then ascended into heaven. To this, he presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. And gathering them together, Yeshua commanded, he gave them the Torah, not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait to tarry for what the Father promised. Since the Torah requires adult males to appear in Jerusalem on Shavuot, the Talmudim, the disciples following Yeshua, Yeshua's Torah or instructions, waited in Jerusalem for the festival, the feast of gathering that the Ruach HaKodesh was given, the one who would bring in the harvest of the nations and teach them the Torah. Yeshua said, you heard of from me, for you Canaan baptized, immersed with water, but you shall be immersed with the Ruach HaKodesh, be filled 
with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. In Acts 2 1, when the days of Pentecost, the Greek word is Pentecost, meaning 50th day had come, they, the Talmudim, 120 of them, men and women, including Miriam, the mother of Yeshua, and Yeshua's brothers and sisters by now were believers, were all together in one place. Suddenly, there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared in physical bodily form to them, tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. This was what in Acts 1.8 Yeshua was saying, but you shall receive power when the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. Hallelujah. The empowering of the Ruach HaKodesh. Signs and wonders was there. The Ruach HaKodesh equipped them as well as he equips us. Equip them to speak in different languages. Acts 2 5. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven, who came from the diaspora for the regalim shalom. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together. And they were bewildered because they were each one hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying, Why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And has, how is it that we each hear them in our own language? We hear them in our own language, in our own tongues, speaking of the mighty deeds of God. Hallelujah. And they all continued in amazement and great perplexity saying to one another, what does this mean? But Kepha, taking his stand with eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, men of Jeduya, Jeduya, Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day, 9 a.m. in our watch. But this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in those days pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will grant wonders in the sky above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this word. Yeshua, the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in our your midst, just as you yourselves know, this man delivered up by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God. You nailed to a tree by the hands of godless men and put him to death and God raised him up again putting to the agony putting an end to the agony of death since it was impossible for him to be held in its power therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Yeshua whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, 
they were pierced to the heart and said to Kepha and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Kepha said to them, Repent and let each of you be immersed in the name of Yeshua Mashiach for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call to himself. Hallelujah. Repent. Ask forgiveness. Turn from our wicked ways. Turn back to God. Accept Yeshua as Lord and Savior. That is the word of faith which we all are preaching. Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth Yeshua as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. My friends, my classmates, Ateneo, way back in high school, college, my relatives, say this third prayer with me. Abba Father, I have sinned and fall short of your glory. I repent. Please forgive me with Yeshua. I turn from my wicked ways. Thank you, Abba, for sending Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua, for dying on the cross in my behalf, for shedding your precious blood to wash me clean. I invite the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit of Christ, to dwell, to come into my life. Now I'm born again. Amen. Lastly, as we were talking of Shavuot, as a Jewish wedding custom, Revelations 19.7, says, let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him, to King Yeshua, 